you're about halfway through camp, get an important scrimmage today. Who's flashed? Who's really impressed you at this to this point? On the whole team, or yes. uh, well, you know, I want to look at the field today. Today was really the first day of pads that uh, we've hit. Uh, we've tackled to the ground. Uh, a lot of the stuff leading up to this point, we're kind of installing, and you know, you didn't get a really feel for that. Today was a little bit more of a feel for that. I want to get on the film and, and, and see what that was all about. But certainly, the defensive line, I thought, did a good job creating penetration. You, know, you, you felt that. Baron Browning has, has uh, you know, shown so far that, that he's really made a lot of progress in a short period of time. That's been exciting. I think our secondary is getting their hands on a lot of balls. We had a couple uh, pick sixes out there, which is really good today. So. Uh, you know, I think those guys are doing a good job. I want to watch the film and really, uh, you know, grade it and see how guys grade it out. But, you know, we're going to treat it like a game and see how everybody, uh, you know, did in terms of a grade. And then we'll go from there. Front row left. Mitch. Hey, Ryan. Uh, B.B. Landers talked at practice the other day about uh, mental health issues and he uh, uh, put that Twitter video out at, uh, after the late June. I'm sure you've seen it. Um, what does it mean to you to have a kid like that who's willing to talk about this issue, you know, openly? Well, I, I'm, first off, I'm proud that, that uh, he did that. Um, I think that it hit home close to him being from Dayton. Um, but when you look at what's going on out there, um, you know, it, it's happened in almost every major city this, you know, since January 1st, and there's so much going on with it. Uh, you know, we've had meetings, uh, I've talked to the team about uh, you know, Nina and I's uh, fund and you know, what we believe in with on our sleeves. Um, we've hired uh, two more athletic counselors uh, that will be in-house, that will be working with our guys. And they were introduced to the team this past week. And they understand that, that we're here, that uh, there's no stigma attached for asking for help, and that mental illness is, is one of those things that we have to make sure that you know, uh, there's no stigma attached to it. And I think, you know, our guys are hearing the message, and, you know, and I'm proud of BB for standing up. You know, BB um, is somebody who's been here for a while, has got a lot of respect, you know, from the younger guys, and to have a voice like that so that, uh, you know, people can, can hear that it's okay to ask for help, I think it means a lot. So I give you a lot of credit for doing that. Front row middle, Dave. Ryan, I know you said you want to watch the film about the, you know, regarding the scrimmage, but yeah. um, would you say the defense a little bit ahead of the offense right now, vice versa. Just what you share about that. Well, the defense uh, got after the offense today for sure. Uh, offense turned the ball over too many times. Uh, didn't run the ball the way that they, they should. Uh, so the defense won the day for sure. I think when you look at uh, you know the experience level, sure. I think the defense you know has more experience. I think uh, schematically the offense uh, has the uh, you know a couple years in some of the older guys. So I don't know really who's ahead of the other, but I will say up to this point, it's kind of gone back and forth, which is a good sign. The offense will kind of get after the defense one day, and then vice versa. Um, so that's healthy. I think one time, you know, if one side's dominating the other throughout camp, then you may have an issue. Uh, but right now, it's been a good battle. Uh, very disappointed with the turnovers today, but, but I think guys were, were getting after it. I think it was physical. I think it was explosive. And so, you know, again, let's look at the film and see what it was. You know, it's never as good or bad as you think, uh, but we certainly can't turn them all over like we did today. I know injuries is a touchy subject, but I do want to apply that's about Austin Maddox, such a good part of the team this year. He hasn't been practicing, I don't think, at least when we've been out there, what can you share about Austin Maddox? Yeah, again, not really getting into you know specifics on injuries, but, but he's out um, right now, and we expect him back in another week or so. Uh, front row middle, Joey? Hey, can you spell a little bit more on the tournament? How many plays did you guys uh, I, I don't know the exact number, but we tried to uh, even it out. I think we were somewhere around 40 plays with the ones, 40 plays. Maybe, I think it was more with the twos, and then we actually got a bunch of reps with the threes too. So probably closer to 30 there. So there'll be a lot of a lot of uh, film to look at. We we started off by just moving it up and down the field, um, and then we got into uh, third down situations. We had a coming out situation, and then we went down the red zone. Um, so kind of moving around a little bit situationally. Um, you know, this upcoming week we'll start to get into some more two-minute game situations. Uh, but this this gave us an opportunity to kind of learn. You know, get get the coaches off the field, let them play. So uh, working out the kinks that way, and and, uh, and also you know ball security. You know, when you're not really you know hitting live, you know you don't not sure sometimes what ball security is for running backs, quarterbacks, and things like that. So it's good to see. Uh, yeah, we, we had a couple balls on the ground, fumbles-wise, and then I think we had uh, at least two interceptions. 
Um, you know, defense is being really opportunistic throughout camp. They've done a great job of getting their hands on balls, really good. So, um, so that that's a positive right there. But again, on the other side, you know, we got to do a better job, take care of it. Second row, right, Tony. Ryan, do you watch this team now and still be wowed by a play or a player? Oh yeah, yeah. Did, did that happen today? Did anybody wow you today, or who has done that on you? Yeah, I mean, every day you see you see things that. Uh, that, that are pretty amazing. We have some really good athletes out there, and, and guys are competing. And anytime that happens, sometimes you know you see it live, and it kind of takes you. You know, you recognize it. Sometimes you, you don't you don't catch it until you watch it on film. You see it like three or four times, and okay, you know you realize recognize what a nice play it was. And, um, so so it's good. I mean, I think the guys are competing out there. They've got some really good skill guys. We've got some good battles going on up front. Again, the whole thing is being physical and, and how tough can we play. And you mentioned Barry Brown. What have you seen? Where, where is he? Uh, middle linebacker? Is he middle? What's he doing right now? Yeah, he's he's playing. Um, you know, mostly in the middle. He'll move around a little bit though. Uh, he's a uh, he, he plays fast. Uh, he's very very athletic that way. He's physical. He's big. He's strong. And I think Al's doing a good job with him in terms of understanding and, and diagnosing plays, and being in the right spot at the right time. And I think all the linebackers are doing a good job. It's a long athletic group right there, and, uh, and so they're off to a good start. Front row right, Bill. Right tackle position might be the most competitive on your offense. Can you give an assessment of where that stands right now? Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, Bowen, he has more experience. Um, he's been there before. I think it's the first time he's felt really strong on that leg. He's doing a really good job. He's been solid. Um, and then Nick, uh, you know, not as much experience, you know, a lot upside. Um, I think when you look at it right now, it's probably really close. It's probably neck and neck. You know, they're, they're rotating in. Some are getting reps for the ones and twos. We don't really look at, you know, who they're with. We just kind of roll them. And it's does doing a good job of rolling those guys and making sure that they're all getting reps because, again, if, if both of them deserve to play, they will play. So right now, uh, I think it's pretty good. I want to see how they grade out today. How do you do that when I'm going to be one of our tackles? I'm going to have to do it. Seriously, um, consider Yes. Front row right, Austin. Ryan, when you talk about the turnover problems today, do you, is your first impression, would it be offensive execution or credit? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great question. Because I think when, once you get on the film, you have to you know, realize and look at it and see what exactly was going on. You know, was it, was it a pressure? Was it a route that was wrong, running correctly? Or was it just a really good defensive play? And so that, that's what we got to look at. I think maybe a little bit of both. I think there's some things we could have cleaned up and been a little careful. You know, what happens when you play quarterback in practice, there's no real ramifications for just leading it down, throwing it downfield, and, you know, if a play's made, it's made. If not, it's the next play of practice. But when you're in scrimmage during a game, we obviously know it can be detrimental the whole game. And so uh, that's what we try to create that environment today. Hopefully some more of us is there. I know we've asked you every time about the quarterbacks, but you had suggested you might want to know by two weeks of practice. Is that still the time frame that today helps? Uh, yeah, I, I thought after today I'd have a better feel. I did, you know, nobody went out there and won the job for sure. So again, still a work in progress. And, um, you know, hopefully at this time next week somebody steps up and, and wins the job. Over here, all right, Bill. Right, we saw uh, James Williams lose his flash the other day. Uh, just where have you seen him make a push? Uh, first off, I think he's got some some uh, competitiveness in him. He's tough. He's obviously very got a lot of long head speed. Um, he can really run. And, um, he's, he's been doing a good job. He stepped right up. I mean, he has the mentality that he wants to come in here and play as a freshman, uh, which I can appreciate. He's doing a good job on special teams, and uh, he's mixing it up right away. He's still got a lot to learn. Made a bunch of mental mistakes today, but again, he's a freshman and he's still learning. But he's got the right attitude. Uh, he's going hard, so we can work with that. Is he on a block special teams? Is that where you guys have? Uh, so he's been doing a bunch of that stuff. He's been kind of moving around, and, and as we build a depth chart, he's going to be in consideration. Um, you know, on some of the, the, the scout stuff, he's blocked some punts for us against our, our first, you know, punt team and, and showing up there, giving great effort. So anytime that happens, then we've, we're certainly going to take a look. Um, and then maybe even as the season, season goes on, start to get more responsibility if that's the case. But but that's that's the case with everybody, and, and so they got to earn it. And you were talking the other day about uh, how important it is to find a number two back behind J.K. Uh, does Jalen go back there in there at all? Is he about you think he'll be able to have the ball? Uh, Jalen's at H right now, so he's mostly a receiver. Uh, and so... Yeah, we're, we're looking for that backup spot, um, you know, uh, at an opportunity to, again, to say, okay, here's somebody who's going to win that spot today, and it didn't happen. So uh, we're still looking for that guy, and, 
you know, we, we you know, Master hasn't been practicing, so it's hard, obviously, for him to, to, to win the job. But Demario, Marcus, and, and Steele are all kind of in the battle right now for it. And that battle continues. Third row, right. Uh, uh, Nick Saban said this week that he's in favor of Alabama winning uh, two Power Five non Power teams. I know Ohio State has that coming up some years in the future. Just wondering, as a head coach now, what your kind of philosophy is on non Power but I think that, you know, when Coach Saban's talking about uh, his scheduling, it's just different than ours because uh, we have more conference games. So I, I don't know if it's, it's apples to apples. Uh, you know, we have our, our, uh, nine, on, on our nine conference games, so that, that's, that's different. So, uh, you know, I think if, if we both had, you know, eight uh, conference games, then maybe that would be something to consider. But I think having nine, uh, nine conference games is hard. It just is. You know, I think it, it's, it's hard on the strength of schedule late in the season, and, and it's hard, obviously, when you have to play, you know, in this conference and, and play that many games. So um, I think we're talking about two different things. And then just another broader question. Uh, Target rule has been around for like 10 or 11 years now. There are some tweaks to it this offseason. Uh, just what are your thoughts on how it works, how that works? I, well, I think when you look back on some of those hits that were happening 10 years ago, uh, I mean, when you see them now, it, 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 you stop and it, it, it just takes your breath away because of how violent they were. So it certainly has helped the safety of the player. Um, you know, I, I think it's sometimes, you know, guys are penalized when uh, maybe there's nothing they could have done. But I think the, uh, the spirit of the rule was to protect players more. I think it's done that. Uh, Trevor Wright, Tim? Yeah. Uh, Brown, what is it, sort of the status of Thayer Munford, for example? Is, is there young bringing him kind of along slowly? What the, how would you describe it? Yeah, yeah, no, he's uh, you know he's on volume control and he's coming back strong. He looks really, really good, and uh, we're not just going to throw him out to the wolves early on. We're going to kind of ease him back, but so so far his progress has been really, really good. And two quickies, uh, as you talk here, as you've been speaking here through camp, you seem pretty enthused about your defense. Do you? Does it look different? Does it feel different than it did a year ago? I mean, what's just, what is you kind of going, going on about the group? Well, I, I just think, first off, there's an energy to them. I always like when guys are a little salty and have an edge to them and have something to prove. I just like that about uh, any player at any level. And, and I feel that about those guys. Um, you know, they had to read a lot of stuff in the off season and during the season last year. And, and that makes them hungry. And, and so I just like that, that, that spirit they have about them right now. Uh, they have something to prove every time they step on on the field, and, and I think that's that makes for good football. Uh, so I just like being around those guys. Uh, they're tough right now, and, and I think uh, they just can't wait to play. And, and I think the more you see those guys play, I think the more you'll see that there's good chemistry over there. And, uh, they like being around each other. Another so. thing, uh, obviously, you didn't get to watch. Who, who had the pick six? I mean, give us a little bit of a highlight. Uh, Look here. I mean, yeah, I think Kayvon Pope had one, and uh, and I believe Seven Banks. Yeah, they, they both had uh, pick sixes, and um, you know a lot of energy out there. Guys were fired up. I mean, anytime you can create a turnover and then score, you know it's huge. You know, think about the TCU game last year, what that did for that game, and so um, so really excited about that. That's a huge emphasis for us this year, and, and uh, proud of those guys. You know, those are two guys, Seven Banks and Kayvon Pope, had good camps. They've done really good things, and, and lo and behold, they're starting to make plays. And uh, final question, over here to the left, Stephen. Yeah. Talk about are you happy with the fact that you're second there, you're going to the side of that, the offense is turning the ball over. Is there, a, like I said, bounds and uh, engaging both emotions? Do you want your defense to call turnovers at the same time you don't want to get Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. That's that's it. That's, you know, as the head coach now, uh, you got to kind of wear both hats and, and feel that out. But again, is it a really good play? Or is it, you know, just like if you, if you give up a long pass or a long run, is it just a really good run? Or did somebody not fit it right? Or was there a mistake on defense? There's an interception. Was it just a bad read, bad pass? Or was it just a really good play on defense? And I think that's what you have to look at. Um, and you just correct it the best you can. But anytime you're competing, you got two sides going after each other. You know, there's got to be some carnage in there. And you just got to kind of you know, sort through it and, uh, you know, make corrections where you need to and then enhance on the other side. No, we did not. No, no, we don't keep scoring in the preseason. Great. Coach, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.